Hey everybody, it's late night again, which means we gotta be a little bit quiet. It's okay, we can be quiet, even though it's late night. Out here, getting weird with the 150. 150 gallons of fresh water tank, coming along quite well. But I will say that I really do have to trim this thing about weekly now. Uh, I've got the Fluval lights on here, good substrate. CO2 going into it, <laughs> you know, doing a lot of water changes, using the Easy Green fertilizer, all that kind of stuff, and uh, that means I can't really skip a week on the maintenance. Why am I doing it late night? I get busy because of the family and stuff like that, and uh, it kind of works out that I'd be able to come out here late night and uh, get this thing cleaned up a little bit, and get my kind of weekly stuff done and still be able to shoot a video for you guys so you can take a look inside my tank see how it's going and just you know see what's happening and uh, I can give you guys kind of an overlay on how much I got to trim every week and stuff like that uh, just to keep the maintenance up on it keep it looking nice and spiffy and um, you know if you have any questions or anything feel free to, to post them down below and uh, it's gonna be kind of a slow video but uh, I'll be sure to highlight all the all the plants that were that we're working on and what we got going on. There are some secrets in here though that you might see in the video, but I'm not really gonna be doing too much with them today. trimmed and I'm gonna plant a couple of these extra stems I have into this kind of bald spot right here of which eventually I'm gonna remove everything from the front everything that's down here in the front will be coming out because um, I got some plants that are gonna take the front seat there and um, that will stay much shorter, but you know, there'll be a video when I do those, so don't despair. Don't be tripping. Don't be tripping, internet. Certain plants I like to pack together real tight. Limnophilia would be one of them. I like it to kind of really fill in, but I think I'm going to be taking the ones out of the corner there probably next week when I get the, uh, the low carpeting, you know, foreground plants. That's the word I'm looking for. 
This Ludwigia is looking really cool, but we can't let this go on. This will grow up too tall. Then we'll have a real problem on our hands. So, yes, right now it is really cool, but just a little bit of Ludwigia repens like this and it'll just grow all the way up to the, the water line and then next thing you know, we got a problem. So trim it right about here. Pretty simple deal. So, hair algae over here too. Not good guys. Don't like seeing these little snippets of hair algae showing up. But just be persistent. Don't go buy a fish. Don't go buy a fish that you think is going to eat hair algae. Just uh, go to the dollar store, get some cheap toothbrushes, and twirl it on out of there. Check your water, you know, change your, your fertilizer dosing a little bit, maybe dial it back, maybe dial it up. It could be low, could be high. That's a weird little boost. Weird little trimming of a Busa Philandra floated over there. I haven't really escaped with the Busas very much. I don't really just kind of have them holding in the background, you know. Not doing a ton with them. This uh, Ludwigia repens. It's a real easy plant. Almost always tell people to get some Ludwigia, especially if they're new or maybe you're having trouble with your plants, you want something that's that you don't have to mess with too much. This one, uh, the messing with it is trimming it and replanting it. That's pretty much all the messing that you got to do. But we can kind of bunch it up down here a little bit. Let that chunk root. Let this root. We just put that in there. I don't know where the other one went. Seems to have disappeared. Float it off. Somewhere. I don't know. I will find it later. Oh, here it is. Oh, there it is. I didn't have to go far. It's just hiding. And we'll just stick this little guy back here in the back. Give it a little space. Let it grow up here. Let it give a little bit of shade. So, like, um, like here's a good example right here stuff that you gotta find and get out a little a couple of java fern leaves back here they're kind of not looking they're not, they're not coming back um, so we've got a little pile of java fern here that's growing kind of on this rock which kind of giving us this little sprigs of green a little tiger lotus popping up. Love these little tiger lotus. Those are so cool. And where did that little boost go? Oh, here it is. It's hiding back here. But just to give you an idea, I normally just stick them in the back, kind of let them hide out, kind of do their own thing in the back. And you just got like a little, a little boost of philandra in case you want to do something with it you know just let it chill out back there you gotta you gotta have them in the foreground all the time you know having a, a little too much light i just like to let them sit back there until they grow really big and then bust them out and act like i'm a big deal even though i'm not um, you know and then people are like man how's it get that big but the, uh, mentioned the tiger lotus. These little pads need some trimming every once in a while. You get ones that get old and they start to look like this. You can just reach down there, pluck them out. Or they'll melt off on their own, you know. You don't have to worry about it too much, but every once in a while, uh, find one and just get rid of it. 
This tiger lotus is 100% a plant that I would recommend to just about anybody because even if you just got the bulbs and let's say that your tank wasn't quite ready for them, that's like a really old leaf. Let me find one that's kind of newer. Let me pull some of these down here. We can't find a couple that are kind of really cool looking. Um, a little bit of iron in the water bring, really bring out these red spots. You know, the ones down here you can see. Um, but like I was saying, the uh, you can get some of the bulbs and stuff, and like maybe your water's not perfect for them at the time, but you can uh, be working on your water quality, and next thing you know, you'll get in line with what the tiger lotus wants. You'll start to see a lot of these leaves all popping up and stuff. They're really cool when they're growing on their way to the surface. Really cool. Let's see what else is going on back here. Uh, not too much. I don't need to trim the crypts or anything like that. They're doing fine. Um, not too much else to go really messing with on this side. The alternanthera over here is not, don't really need to do anything with it. Don't really need to do anything with that right now. I got a uh, Cryptocarini Spiralis Tiger down here. You can see kind of the leaves. And then uh, the pink flamingo crypts and stuff like that. They don't need anything right now. Um, let's see what else is going on back here. So, this is one thing that I like to do back here. So you can see a lot of the rock work back here. The plants have definitely grown up on it. But let's pop the camera up here. Here's something that I like to do. I always like to have something like just a big clump of Anubius Nana that is just kind of chilling up high up on a rock but not too much direct light and just let that thing root on there because at some point I'm going to move these rocks around I'm probably going to rescape with these these rocks and I want to be able to when I move them have like a really big established Anubius on there which that one is pretty much getting there now it's got it goes all the way back here you know it's a lot bigger than a softball you know but if I move all the plants out of the way you can see it and then when the plants all go back, you just get a little bit of added depth to the tank itself with this layer and this layer and then this layer, right? It just kind of fills in behind, which you can't see on the camera, but needless to say, it's there. Hold on. Let me move the camera up a little bit. There we go. That's a little bit better angle, ain't it? Isn't it? So, we got some of this... Caroliniana back here. But, eh. I'm gonna have to trim this one. This one's too long. It's gotten up to the top. But you can see how red it gets. Let's get quite red. I just did a video on this like not that long ago, maybe two weeks ago or something. And um, definitely would pick some of this up. If you're out there in the world and you got some planted tanks, pick it up. downside of dealing with this tiger lotus is that it's hard to plant back here. I have to trim 
this uh, Pogostem and Stellatus first. Mainly because it obstructs the most amount of light heading down into the tank. And it helps me to do this plant first. Because then I can see what all's going on down below. Like if I started at the bottom, I wouldn't really know what areas were going to be shaded and which ones were kind of not going to be shaded. Now the other pogostemon requires a little bit of trimming, even though it's looking about as cool as it possibly can. It's just that I know a week from now, this will be completely unmanageable. So some of these real tall ones I have to trim down because we want those to sprout and send up some new shoots from down here to kind of fill in and maintain the direction that everything's sloping in here. Sorry shrimp, get out of the way. Whoops, trimmed that one a little short. Oops, it's okay. Plant an extra one down here. Woo! This one doesn't grip quite as well. I think that's about as good as it's going to get this week. Next week I'll have to trim a couple more to make a couple changes. That's okay. A little tiny bit of hair algae over here floating around in this tank. 
Oh, we brought that on. But I will find out tomorrow. I'm gonna do more testing. I like to do my a lot extensive testing after I do a bunch of trimming. See what's happening with the water. for that is that the water change will actually come tomorrow. I don't like to do the water change until it's kind of sat for like a day, you know, 20 hours or something. You know, I'm not, I'm not planning on doing late night water changes tomorrow, but sometime during the day tomorrow I'll do my water changes. I'll test before uh, I do the water change and then I'll test after I do the water change. So, one of the things that we have to remember when setting up and maintaining any aquarium, not just a planted aquarium, any aquarium. The health of the system, the environment that we're setting up comes first. Aesthetics are important, but they'll always come after the health. So of the system that you're working in. Um, and more often than not, if you get the system healthy, and the system is healthy for everything that lives in it, the aesthetics will be really easy to handle. So there's definitely an added benefit to being able to have a healthy system because you're focusing on making sure it's healthy for, you know, maybe you have a shrimp only tank, maybe you have a cichlid tank, um, and if you're focusing on making sure that that environment works for whatever lives in it, you know, even the same thing with a planted aquarium, if you're making, if you're running the system so it's healthy for the plants, it's much easier to maintain the plants. It's much more, it's definitely not a big deal when you have to trim and clear out a little bit of algae when your plants are healthy, they're growing well. It's just a, it's not that big of a deal to do a little bit of extra work on the aesthetic part when everything's growing well and doing well health-wise. So that's what I always remind people to focus on is the health of the system for the plants, then you know, once you've got that going, then working on the aesthetic part becomes pretty darn easy. Uh, moving plants around, cleaning a little bit of algae. You know, like you guys see me cleaning a little hair algae and stuff like that, and it, it's really not a big deal to clean a little bit of algae when all the plants are healthy. It's a real drag to be cleaning a bunch of, you know, be cleaning some algae out when the plants aren't doing well. You know, if you just have like this ugly mess and haven't really been paying attention to the ecosystem all that much. It becomes a real drag to clean that stuff out when it's not, at the very least, like a healthy system. So if you focus on a healthy system, like doing a little bit of the aesthetic stuff like this just becomes like really easy. It's not, it just, it's not a stressful thing. You know, you can do a little bit of trimming move some plants around you know it's a lot easier to make decisions on um, if you want to move plants or you know which ones you want to trim or which ones maybe you don't want to trim um, makes that decision process like so much easier um, especially when you know if everything is going to grow back looking good 
being healthy than, you know, trimming stuff that has grown really big, you know, it doesn't stress you out thinking like, oh no, my tank's gonna look ugly for a little bit. Um, Cause you know, it's gonna grow back. You know, you're confident that it's gonna grow back instead of being stressed out and hoping that everything's gonna grow back. So this alternate Thera, this is the, the big stuff. Um, I think sometimes it's called Scarlet Temple now, I think. I think people are referring to it on the streets. On the street name. Um, Scarlet Temple. I might be wrong about that, though. I think it's pretty easy to find this plant now. It's just harder to find the small one that I have on the other side. The sort of mutated little version. And I'm just going to keep packing it back here in the uh, in Senegalensis. I'm going to have to trim that one up. Because it's just too tall. And before it gets to the top, I can actually plant it right there. And give ourselves a little better planting space back there. That'll work good. Will it work good or will it work well? Uh, depends on you're an English major or not. Or if you're just a weirdo like me. But we're good. And then you're excited about it working good. with these I'm gonna leave these tall for this week I don't think I normally would leave these ones tall but I think I'm going to for this week Well, hopefully you guys got some tips and pointers and things and it was helpful to you if it was helpful to you let me know if not well let me know that's kind of all I'm gonna do for today mainly because it has gotten to that point where I am hitting the wall and I need to go sleep for a couple hours everybody have fun out there keep, keep working on your tank